Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. If you are brand new, then welcome. If you're returning, then welcome back. Um, this video is going to be about my real estate journey in a sense. Um, I got my license about two months ago and I just recently posted on social media that I got my license and whenever I posted that, I had a lot of inbox messages, inbox questions. A lot of people wanted to know the process to getting the license and then I had a lot of questions on test taking tips. So I am going to make the video on telling you, I guess, the process from beginning to end for getting your real estate license to include test taking tips toward the end uh, just to be sure that you pass your test the first go around. Okay, so the first step to getting your license would definitely be to decide your learning method and what's best for you and your schedule at the time. Um, in South Carolina, you have the option of going to school online or you can do an in-seat school. Um, I myself ended up doing a in-seat school located in Bluffton, South Carolina. My teacher name was Tom Lambert. Uh, he's a broker there and he's been in the business for years and years. So he's really educated and if you are in South Carolina in this area, I definitely recommend you going to that school. Um, the school is a five week long course. Um, for module one and module two or unit one and unit two combined I paid nine hundred and thirty dollars unit one is three weeks long and then unit two is one week long so the first time or unit one is going to be um, a 60 hour course for the first three weeks then you will have a one week break in between and then you'll go back for unit two which is going to be your 30 weeks um, after you have gotten your seat time the next step would be at the end to take the test that comes along with the schools. You actually have to pass um, a final exam basically at the end, basically proving that you paid attention uh, in the class before they release you from the school. Once you have passed that test, they will then give you your unit one, which is your pre-license, and then your unit two, which is your post-license, um, certificate. You will need those certificates to turn into the PSI exam so you can ask for permission to take your test and you'll also need to send those to the real estate commission along with the payment um, to be able to get your license. So um, after you have passed that final exam with the school, like I said, they'll give you your certificates. The next step would be to ask for permission to take the PSI exam. Unit 2 is not a requirement. To take your PSI exam, you do not have to take Unit 2. To actually get your license and to start practicing real estate, you do need to have Unit 2 out of the way and you need to have that certificate to actually get your license. My teacher recommended that we do pre-license and post-license um, prior to taking the state exam simply because post-license, um, which is Unit 2, which is the 30-week, or 30 week the 30 um, hour course that you would need um, that goes into depth basically more about the laws that you need to know more about um, the requirements more about anything really small and you know that you really need to know basically about being a real estate agent it's meant to be um, post license so you're supposed to, to take the course after you've already passed the exam the state exam, but like I said, it helps a lot better. So he recommended we do that and pretty much everybody in my class ended up doing that. So what I would say for the test taking tips is study, study, study. Once again, whenever it comes to the math portion, if you're not good at math, don't waste your time on that. Focus on all of the other portions of the test. Everything else that's going to be inside your book, Focus on those because those are what's going to matter most. The test is very nitpicky, if that makes sense. So make sure you read it word for word. Read it really slow. Make sure you understand the question. Make sure you understand what you're reading. Um, a lot of them will have words in there that will throw you off. Um, a lot of the definitions are very close. The only thing that might separate a definition um, would be a word or two. And if you were one of those people, like how I used, I studied my first go around, um, I was like, there's so many definitions, so many phrases to know. So what I used to do, um, or what I did my first go around was, um, 
I would just remember um, the first couple words and I knew that if I seen that word and I would know that definition but whenever you see the question what they would do is put all the the definitions that pretty much are the same thing if that makes sense so it'll be hard to pick which one is what because you'll read the definition or you'll read the question and it'll be like okay that sounds like this and you'll go to press a and you read another part of the question and it's like oh well that sounds like c and then it's like oh but it could be a then you start second guessing yourself because they all start to sound like it could be all of them because it's a part of each definition it's a part of each word's definition inside of um the question so it's hard to pick so basically with that you need to pick your best answer like i said it's really hard because all of them sound like the best answer you have to go with the best answer is what they say um something else that will definitely help um your school should give you a study guide um study that study guide not even just to take their final exam but it was crazy because of the amount of questions that i seen on my study guide um, and I've seen on online study guides that were actually on the test, almost word for word, if not word for word. And I thought that they were just, you know, questions to study. So I didn't um, memorize them. And I would see it and I'll be like, oh, okay, well, I remember seeing this, but I don't remember the answer. And now I'm stuck back guessing, trying to figure out what I remembered that I maybe uh press for that answer so with that being said whenever you're doing as many online practice exams as you can whenever you're looking over your practice exams that your school gave you memorize them know them when you see them because you're i'm guarantee i'm going to guarantee you that you're going to get some of those on your state exam so whenever you're doing your studying try to make sure that you know these vocabulary words apart whether that's by a certain phrase try to know them word for word but just know the ones that are super close together try to make sure you know those ones definitely apart for example um, a mortgagor and a mortgagee the mortgagor is the borrower and then the mortgagee is the lender this sample question right here um, which of the following parties must sign the note and the mortgage when financing a property? You would think it's the mortgagee, which is supposed to be the lender, um, but the actual answer is the mortgagor, which is the borrower. So it could be very confusing. And like I said, if you don't know the complete difference or know the definition for sure, um, you'll make a mistake and you'll be confused and you'll be, you know, uh, both of them sound, they sound correct. Two of them sound correct and now you're sitting there contemplating, sweating, trying to figure out if it's C or D. You know, and then it's like, oh, well, it could be number two, which is the grantor, because I heard that word before and what if it's that? I remember hearing my instructor say that. But you don't remember down to the nitty gritty of the definitions for these words but you know they all three could be correct they sound correct and now you go to guess and you get it wrong because you don't know um exactly what's going on with the test um something else i would say is your first answer is your best answer a lot of people you know you hear that since high school your first answer is your best answer but definitely go with that don't go back changing your answer just try to stick with the first one it's a reason you picked that one the first time take your time the time is or the the test is timed um you can always hide the time up in the top right corner just make sure you pace yourself but you have more than enough time don't rush if you want you can go back um but like i said try not to change your answers unless you know for sure like a light bulb went off in your head it's like oh i know for sure that it's this one because i just remembered you know but don't go back changing them just because you're scared that you might have gotten it wrong only change it if you know for sure that you know now what the answer is. Also, don't be afraid to pick, for example, the letter C, five questions in a row. If that's what you think the answer is, or you know that that's what the answer is, then press it. Um, I feel like a lot of times in the questions, you know, I was like that as well, and I'll be like, there's no way that they're gonna give me five questions in a row, and all of them are letter B. <laughs> and most, it's, is right 
it's letter V. So another test taking tip would be to use flashcards. I used to use Quizlet a lot. They have a lot of things on Quizlet. I definitely recommend that. It's free. So another thing that I would say about the test um, is to answer the questions that you know for sure that are easy to you and that you can breeze past and you'll be fine because it'll suck if you were to sit there and contemplate on an answer or a question for so long and then all of a sudden like your time gets past you and you have 20 minutes left and you have 30 questions left and you want to take your time on those just no way you can probably take your time on those because the questions are so long you want to think about them you want to work out the math questions and now you're running out of time and now you're rushing through it and missing questions that you could have got right if you were able to take your time so i think it's best if you would go ahead and do questions that you know for sure are easy and that you understand go ahead and get through those first and you can mark the questions that you didn't answer or mark the questions that um, were hard for you, you can always go back and do those and take your time and evaluate how much time you have left and stuff like that so you won't run out of time or, you know, waste your time um, for the test. So another test taking tip would be to never choose an answer you've never heard of. If you see a word and it's like, I've never seen this word before, eliminate that one. Now you have three inches to choose from. Something else that would help you is to read the answers first then read the question carefully and i'm going to say read the answers first um simply because you can read it and it's like okay i know this word i know this definition i know this word cool and then you can go back and read the question as you're reading the question you can be like oh that sounds like so and so you know and you know that that's a word that's actually a choice for you so you can determine the answer that way um, so that would be another good way to do test taking. Um, so that concludes this video. That's basically the process to you getting your real estate license here in South Carolina um, from start to finish to include the school, how much the school was, how much it cost to take the PSI exam, um, even going into test taking tips. Like I said, I took the PSI two times. Um, I passed the state portion the first try and on the second try I passed the general portion. So it can be done. Like I said, you'll meet people that have done it six times, ten times, people that have given up. If you study and you put your mind to it, it can be done. There's a lot of money to be made in real estate. There's millionaire real estate agents out here. Um, you can be one of them. Definitely study and put your mind to it. It can be done. Um, if you have any more questions about the video or about getting your real estate license here in South Carolina that I didn't answer you need me to go more in depth about just comment down below or message me and I'll be sure to answer your questions thank you for watching